Greetings, my name's Dwayne, and today I wanna to show you how I made these beautiful six inch gnome wall hangings. Uh, they're real simple to make, a lot of fun, real beautiful. They come out uh, great, and it's made with a number of little things, uh, adding some little miniatures to them, some clay things, uh, some coloring, some painting, uh, but I love the way they come out, and it was just something fun to make. So I wanna take some time and show you how to how I quickly make these. Uh, and we're gonna start out with just showing you where I got, it, got the idea from and everything. And it's fun to add the color. So a couple things that you'll need, uh, either is some miniatures, uh, some buttons, some things that just add some character. Uh, clay, if you work with clay, you can either use Sculpey clay or the air dry clay, either one I'll show you. Uh, I've also used just some paper, uh, like flowers and painted them too. So there's a number of ways you can do use to decorate uh, these these things. Uh, also some jewelry, uh, just simple uh, little costume jewelry added to it just to bring some color to it. But this is the idea. I'll show you what I came up with and show you how to make it. And going through Hobby Lobby one day, I came up with these wiggle eyes. As you can see, they're just a reflective thing. I found them in the clearance section. Uh, they were just trying to get rid of them, and every now and then I try to come up with something that I can do. So there's actually two to a package. Uh, they were in the back of the store, uh, and I just saw the reflection in that and thought maybe I could do something with that. So that became the base to my little gnome wall hangings here. And what I did was it comes with a plastic cover. And my original thought was to put something on top of the plastic there. But then when I got playing with it, I saw that this little eyeball thing moved around inside. It was a little bit irritating, but also gave me the idea that I could put something inside there. So I took my X-Acto knife and just carefully go around the outer edge. Now, some of these I found were not glued too well, so they came right apart. Others of them, they did a real good job gluing on, so I didn't want to ruin the metallic inside there. So I'm just using the, the basic beginning, the, the very tip of my blade to go around and be careful. Anytime you're cutting anything with your blade, be careful going around the, the edges there. And as I said, I'm just using the tip of it just to get underneath so I can pull that plastic cover off of there. And I'm just following it around. And so once I get that done, what I'm looking to do is to take that, that eyeball out of there, maybe save it for some other project if I need it, and cut all the way around the edge. So, as you can see, once it's cut, you're gonna be left with some of this white around it that it's cut on. And what I've done is I've then I've taken just black acrylic paint and painted around it. And just for time frame here, so we can get things going and so I have one that's dry, I've painted around there so we have the black on that to cover up the white there. That's all you need to do, but like I said, just be careful when you're with that blade, cutting that and cutting the dome off of that. So with removing the dome, I now have the, my shiny surface here and I can add what I'd like to in the inside here. And what I do is I just took a bunch of miniatures. I took some, started out sometimes with uh, some of the buttons uh, these are buttons that you can get at Joann's, you can get at Hobby Lobby, uh, Michael's, anything just to add some little color and character to it. Uh, the other thing I did because I work with gnomes and I work with mushrooms, uh, I got out my Sculpey clay and started playing with the clay and designed uh, just some little small gnomes with that. Let me show you. Just made some little one to two inch gnomes, about, about four centimeters uh, that you're looking at there. And also some mushrooms. 
just out of the clay there, just for the fun of it, and tried a couple different sizes there to make, giving a little character. And then I also went into the uh, molds, where I could find some molds. Uh, sometimes it's gonna be in the cake decorating. Sometimes you can get into the resin and have some different molds that you can have with your Sculpey there. Uh, these give a lot of character to it. I love how these come out because you get all the grooves and everything in there. And with this, you can either use the air dry clay or the Sculpey clay. The Sculpey clay is a baked clay. It'll tell you how long on the packaging and everything. Uh, but with I like that because I'm able to do a lot of different things and be able to do them all at the same time. And especially if you get a mold that has a lot of the same leaves, it's easy just to fill that all in there and do that at one time. So I'm just pressing in there and actually got a lot of fit in there perfectly. If I have a little bit too much, I just take one of my scraping tools and scrape the top off. You can also do that with just a knife or something flat. You can push it down in there, rub off the excess there, just using a little bit there, pushing it down, uh, all sorts of tools, just something nice, soft, blunt, just to give you an idea, because some people say, well, I don't have all these expensive tools. Some of the stuff uh, picked up even at the Dollar Tree. Just nice, simple, easy to work with tools here. Uh, if you have anything, even a paintbrush, uh, you have a thick paintbrush, easy to work with, just to push it in there and roll it on there. So it's not anything that you have to have a lot of equipment or anything for. And when I pull that out of there, nice little texture to it and everything. So that gives me some of my stuff that I'm working with, how I get my my actual stuff that I do, uh, but also mushrooms, and they're fun to make because especially if you're a gnome maker, uh, we like to make the hats, we like to make different shapes and everything. And I'm just taking just a little piece and I start out just kneading it a little bit so it's soft and making it into a triangle. Just flatten it out a little bit, make it into a triangle, and then I can stretch it. Stretch the top part. And I know this isn't a clay making class as such or anything, but that gives me something real quick there that I can either make that into a gnome hat or a mushroom. And a mushroom, all I'm gonna need to do is make a little ball out of another little piece of clay. And what I'll usually do is I'll take the tip of my knife or a tip of something else and just sort of edge it in there a little bit. Put the ball in there. Bring it together. And there I have my basic mushroom. So it's just as simple as that. Now, if I want to do something where I'm making a gnome instead, again, I start out with that, that basic as the hat. And the hat, I can do anything with. I can droop it over more if I want. I can bring it up. I can twirl it around a little. Again, I'm just having some fun making a little character to it. Everyone can be a little bit different with how you make that. And it's just starting out with a simple triangle. And with that, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make another triangle. And my triangle is going to be my beard. So if you're not using Sculpey clay, or if you're not using much clay, or if you're beginning to just get into it, I've just started getting into playing with it. Uh, I don't do it a lot, so as I said, this really isn't a class on clay making, but this is how I make my characters. I've just got another triangle coming down. Then what I actually do is make five just small little round balls. reason for those five little balls is I take one and put it on as the nose. So here I am starting out with my gnome nose and then I'm just going to attach the other ones. One to the side here, one off to the other side, and then two down to the bottom just to make the feet. So that's how simple 
simple that I make them. And then you could do, I like to put in the beard there. Uh, take a needle if you want, something sharp, and just draw down. into that to make the beard. And then, you know, like I said, uh, the Sculpey will tell you how long to bake. I usually, it's about 15 minutes. Uh, these are very thin, very light products, uh, usually a little under 200 degrees. Put them in the oven. And I'll make a whole sheet at the same time. I'll try to do up a whole bunch of leaves, a whole bunch of gnomes, a uh, bunch of the mushrooms, little characters like that that are real quick and easy. And as you can see, I've made some other mushrooms here. And then I'll just get out my acrylic paints and paint them. So just to give it a little bit of character, a little bit of design there. And we can come up with all different types of gnomes and characters here. So we're just going to build one here real quick. I'm going to get my shiny surface back here. And I wanted to do something where I added, this was actually a little miniature that I got uh, at Hobby Lobby. It came in a little pack of them. Uh, as I said, you can buy them, either the buttons or the miniatures. Uh, they have a couple sections. They have a little gnome section. They also have miniature sections where you can uh, pick up little things like that. And he's gonna go down here just for some character. I made another gnome, painted him. We're gonna put him on here. And I actually, what I did with him, I wanted to make him holding a leaf and it didn't look right. I couldn't get the leaf right up against him with the other arm. So I actually didn't put the net, uh, arm on there so I could make a leaf next to him. So these guys are gonna get glued down and that's all I do is take my hot glue and glue it to the backs. And I put it just below the center, not quite center, bringing it down just a little bit. I mean, you could put it in the center, that's great. I just like to have a little bit of extra space. So when I'm putting stuff together, if I need to put, you know, if I wanna put like a little butterfly or something, a little button or something else up top, I can do that. Uh, so I'm gonna glue him down there. Get rid of my glue strings off of here. Now, I also add some moss. Now this was actually picked up at the Dollar Tree. You can get this anywhere, Joann's, Hobby Lobby, Michael's, uh, anywhere along that line. They all have, carry the moss here. And this is the, the dirty part here. And we're gonna glue this down on him too, but on the bottom here to give some ground cover. Add my glue. And I put a little bit on the bottom of the snail character on there too, so it's stuck to him. So it makes it look like he's on a little ground cover. And I'm going to add my Mr. Gnome here. And as you can see, I painted some of the back, but not the whole back because I knew I was going to be gluing a backside there. So we're gonna put him right next to his buddy there, his snail there. And I love to find little things that go along with them, little rabbits, uh, as I said, butterflies, snails, ladybugs, thing along, things along that time that kind that just go along with the nature and go with the gnomes. Now, the leaf I got for him here, I started out with one of my, just my air dry clay, actually with that one. I can find one of those. I'll take one of these out here. I've already painted. But what I did was I painted them green. So I painted the leaf just a solid green. So I had colors all around it. And I tried this once with gluing it on first and then painting it, but I couldn't get into all the little nooks and crannies and everything. So I suggest you paint it first. Give it a base coat uh, so you have something on it there. And then I've bought these uh, metallic paints. Now I bought a pack of six. You can buy individual. They have silver. They have white. They have all different colors. I can show them probably the base here to show you a little bit more the different you know styles and colors to them. Uh, 
but they come out beautiful colors and everything, give you some depth, some character. And I also carry uh, the metallic paints in a tempera paint, and these are acrylics. The tempera, I mentioned them because those are great uh, for paper mache, paper products and that type of thing. Uh, but you need acrylic paints if you're doing on the clay. And all I simply do, give me a little shake up here. Since I don't want to mess up my counter here or anything like that, I'll just use the lid here. And I take a brush. Give me just a little bit of light paint on there. And I'm just going to touch it up a little bit. I want my green to still shine through, but I want to get it some shiny on there too. So I'm going to put some on there. And then I'd like to add a little bit more depth. So I'm going to pick out a darker one. You can always stir them up too. I just I know I've been using the paints lately, so they should be good and stirred up too. Grab another brush here. And so this is what I'll do with several leaves. I'll make sure I got four or five leaves out at a time. That way I can just paint and get them covered before I do anything else. But I'm adding some darker colors to it. So I just get some light and some dark in there, get some little depth going on there. And again, those are just metallic acrylic paints. You can find them with acrylic paints, and I've even seen them at Dollar Tree. Uh, you can pick them up there uh, just to get something going there. Uh, while, I got the, while I got the acrylic paints out here too, and I'm just playing there, I like to paint my moss too. This adds to the shine, the overall character. And if you do have some that's sticking out a little bit too far, just trim it. But I'll, I'll, I'll touch up my moss, get some of that out of there. even add a little bit more. Add some next to my gnome there. So I said, I'm looking for the reflection. I'm looking for the way the light hits everything. And so I'm doing a gold, the gold tone in here. And I can actually do this. I've done it without the moss, without painting the moss too and just giving a green look all the way around it, which is real nice too. It gives a lot of character to doing it. I'll show you in a moment here, once I get all this on here, how I do the outside. And the outside is again, I'm covering with the moss. And if I don't want to paint with the paint on the moss, I don't have to. What I like to do is get that, any glue strands out before I co cover it up too. There we go. So we added some shiny there to the moss. Now I'm going to add my leaf. And this one I'm trying to make colorful, just having a little fun with the colors and everything. The purple one was one I really had in mind earlier to do that I liked and wanted to put everything together to coordinate uh, with the colors. But this I wanted to make sure, I wanted to have a little, little gnome holding on to a, a leaf there. As I said, I like, I like the texture, I like the character of it all. Ooh. A little bit off there. And then, let me find one of my other. This is again one of those leaves that I, you know, just made in the mold there, painted green, then put the gold paint over top. And I want to use it for a little bit of background. for some texture, some character going on in here. 
And as I said, I'm looking just for, to have some fun and be colorful. Now the buttons, when they come in the packets here, they come with a little eyelet type of thing, hole on, on the back there. I just simply cut those off. I just take my X-Acto knife and I just cut that right off of there. Uh, that way I can get it to lay flat. If you want to have it propped up, you could do that too. Again, gives it a little bit more character to it, a little bit more you know depth to it. Uh, you could prop it up or have it laying flat. Uh, when I look at that, I actually like the like the propped up look. That's really cool. Uh, so trying to decide right there and then if I want to go with the red and blue or the orange and blue, and I think the red and blue with the propped up look is going to win here. I said it's all up to you. However, you want to build your characters. I don't, you know, I give the basics. I love to do that. Just give a basic. This is how I do it. Uh, give you the ideas, let you decide. Uh, you can paint anything you, how you want. Uh, I also saw like little gnomes, other little characters available at Dollar Tree. Uh, simple stuff like that that you can just pick up and put in there yourself. I want to make sure we hold on there. I don't like that little... Maybe that's why I didn't prop it up before. I wasn't too sure on that. Let's get Mr. Butterfly down in there. Gotta say I'm not too crazy about the experimenting. Let's try something else. When all else fails. Maybe that's why I cut that ring off originally. All right, so we gave that a try. Again, I don't like these glue stringies. Coming in here, and what you can do is uh, just get like a blow dryer, hot air a little bit. If you do have any glue stringies, and just blow that. Get those strings out of there before you, before you put your dome on. A lot of people ask me like, what glue gun do you use? What's best? And I couldn't tell you what's best or anything. I think every single one of them has got some type of glue gun glue to it. But so there we have our inside. Now you can always add more, you can do whatever you want. As I said, some of them, I put little pieces of jewelry in, just again, to add a little bit of shine to it, colored in a little bird up top here, and just add some character to them. They're just a lot of fun. And again, you don't only have to add three, four, five little things on here. Uh, next, what I do is I take my dome and now I'm just going to glue around the edges. I'm just going to glue that onto there. Get all my stringies off. Run my hot glue around. And again, this part, if it's not perfect, if you got some glue sticking out, that's fine at first here because we're gonna put moss over top of it. We're also gonna have to, you know, at the end, if we need to heat up a little bit, again, we will. So this is gonna give you your cover. Of everything going on there. And now I'm just grabbing some of my moss here again. And I'm going to find a point usually at the bottom just to start going around. And we're gonna glue the moss in here. Just 
just layer it on. Like I said, lots of times I like to have one showing before and after, but I didn't do that with this just to, so you'll have to bear with me a few moments to just go around here with the whole, whole moss here. And some of the moss can be more of a lighter color, darker color, a little bit more sticks in it. It doesn't matter. Again, we're going to be doing a little bit of gold touch up on it. And here's where also I add the leaves to it too on the outside. Uh, as you can see with a lot of these, I like to add my gold leaves, giving it some more character, uh, add something up at the top here. I left this purple uh, and I put little purple accents in here from little picks that I chopped up and everything. Uh, that was my only purple flower of that kind that I had at this point in time, or else I would have added some gold to it. I wasn't quite sure how that would look, so I left it purple. Uh, but you can see my leaves on the sides here, and that's going to be, we're just going to be gluing those down here. So let's just keep continuing around. hot gluing there. So if you have little flowers that you want to add in here, a little bit of colors, a uh, little bit of rhinestones, that's fine too. Anything to go along with it. Uh, I like the natural woodsy look. Most of my gnomes you're going to see are, you know, woodsy gnomes type of thing. Uh, not quite as the, much of the colorful cutesy as the woodsy added to it. So that's why I got the moss, the, you know, the, the outdoorsy looking stuff. But I also want to get into more of the clay and, you know, working with that. I love the look of the, the gold and just beginning to play more and more with that, with, with the gnomes and everything. I have a basic gnome that I do. But I want to get you know into doing some other stuff too to play with that and learn learn what people like, learn what different things I can do. As I said, these are have become something you can set out, but I also made them as wall hangings too. So I put a just one of the teeth on the back here so it can be hooked up on the wall. And you can see the backing is just simple. You can write your name on there if you want. Uh, type of thing if you have a stamp for your logo or your company or whoever you are and just nice and easy there Again, I try to make it simple I try to give you the ideas show you what I do quickly and I'm amazed what you guys you know do show and do uh, come back easily and everything uh, this is a little fun project and there's so many different ways you can do do this and I wouldn't be surprised if other people come up with other ideas as far as just putting clay around the sides, put care, you know, do something else around the edges. But I like the way the moss looks. I just like because the eyes have a green to it uh, the, that I use. Shake it all out for a little bit, stick down what I have here. As I said, that could be a finished project. You could put a little bow on here. You could put, you know, put the leaves on here in green. Uh, that looks great just the way it is. Uh, but I like to do the touch up here now. I like to add a little bit more character to it. And I think the gold too helps with the reflection. As you can see, I'm sure there's a lot of reflection from the lights here. I'm not, you know, adding lights to it or anything. So it's very simple, kept very simple that way. But I'm gonna take my gold paint and we're gonna find a brush here. Always remember to clean your brushes. I'm terrible that way. I usually get done with some project and then realize, oops, I didn't go back and clean up after myself as well as I should have. So spend the time, clean up. As I said, I'm just adding in, brushing over the 
over that. This will help too if there is any loose moss, it'll get knocked off. And again, if you want to use a couple different, uh, like I said, I got darker, I got lighter, I got gold, silver, bronze. Uh, add a couple different colors to it, you know, add some depth to it. It looks really great that way. There, I picked up just a little bit of moss on there. And again, I'm just... I'm doing things in a hurry here. Normally I'd use a little tub or a little little area that I could put the paint down in, but I just want to show you guys quickly how do how I do things, cover things up, and have fun that way. So with that being painted, now's when I can I can add some of the leaves, you know, just add some of the things that I've colored. Uh, if I have some painted leaves, let me dig through. See what we got here already painted. And I'm going to finish this up in just a moment, but just wanted to get you an idea, show you some of the stuff that's just fun to do and get some character to it and everything. So. What I'm going to do is actually just paint up a few more leaves of this type. Maybe add a little color. And this type of thing, too, where you can actually add other things on the outside, too. So if you want to add little... Uh, little more flowers to it or character... Again, I'm gonna put some leaves in here, but also some just some color, just some fun. We'll see what we end up coming up with. And just I'll just glue those down and randomly put them on there. But that's the idea. I just wanted to show you, get you some fun idea there. This is just a cute little wall hanging, uh, experimenting there. As I said, I love the gold. I love the different reflective stuff that we can do with these. Uh, and they are simple. Uh, as I said earlier, I picked up uh, the, these are actually just wiggle eyes that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. And uh, I've seen them actually at the Dollar Tree too, something similar to this. They're coming out, especially uh, in the fall season, they come out. Uh, and that just gives me my base, my background. And then from there, it's how you want to play with it the character that you want to add to it and you can do some beautiful stuff and just have a great time with it so again thank you and i look forward to seeing what you guys do